Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about sampling in Python. So statistical sampling with an implementation in Python. Now this video is not an exhaustive video on sampling. I'm gonna show you five major techniques that are used in sampling. And then I'll show you for each of them, one use case example, or at least uh, an example that has been used where that technique has been used, and then an implementation of that sample in Python. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so first of all, what is sampling and why do we want to do it? So sampling is about when we want to study a population of observations. So we have um, a population uh, which includes every possible data point that has the particular uh, characteristic or observation that we're interested in studying it. Uh, but for some reason, whether it's time or whether it's financial or it could be the size, uh, which those first two would come into as well, the size of the population, we're not able to study the entire population. And so if that's the case, then we have this whole suite of statistical uh, tools, including probability and inferential statistics, hypothesis testing, and so forth, that will allow us to study a sample and then make inferences about a population with some uh, level of statistical confidence or within some probability, okay? So in other words, you can think of sampling as taking a subset from a population. So a population, now this population, it's all humans, but it doesn't have to be humans. A population just means the set of all possible observations. Okay. <clears throat> so here we select a sample and then how we select the sample is really important actually, because you don't want to take a sample of just the people in the left corner or just the people in the right corner, because then when you study the sample, then the inference could be that everybody in this population lives in the left corner or everybody in the population lives in the right corner, when in reality, the people in the population are living everywhere here, right? So that's just a very generalized example of, of why sampling is important, okay? <clears throat> so in essence, a sample is essentially just a subset of a, of a uh, set. So it's a subset of a set. You could call it a, a universal set, maybe like that, okay? So the, the sample is contained in the population. The sample is contained in the population. So when I teach this concept in a high, high school, I talk about, you know, if we want to study how much oil is in the ocean, okay? So if you want to know how much oil is in the ocean, you clearly could not go and take all of the ocean back to your lab. And so what you can do instead is select various locations of the ocean and then take the, take the uh, ocean samples and then study the samples. And that would give you an idea. Now, of course, like I said before, the sample has to be representative of the population or else you might get some very uh, crazy inferences. And not only that, even when the sample is representative of the population, the inferences are only made within a certain level of probability, okay? So always keep that in mind. <clears throat> so the five sampling methods, uh, let me go here. The five sampling methods that we're gonna be talking about today are some of the most common. Uh, there are more, there are others, but these are the most common and the ones that you, that you might actually use. So the first one that definitely highest and the most uh, important is called simple random sampling. And the next one is called stratified sampling. Then we have cluster sampling. We have systematic sampling. And probably the one that you should not do is called convenient sampling. OK, so first we'll talk about uh, simple random sampling. And this is a basic sampling technique in which each of the individuals or observations in the population is, is, uh, has an equal chance of being selected for the sample. OK. So <clears throat> this reminds me of a, of a story about um, a statistical study or survey on the, uh, based, based on what would the outcome of a presidential election be. So they did a survey of a population, but the sample was not, uh, 
was not a simple random sample. In other words, they only selected to survey people. Who, so it was back in the time when telephones had just been invented, right? So, so back in that time, the people who had telephones were the people who were wealthier. And so when they, when they selected their sample, it wasn't that every person who was a voter had an equal chance of being selected for that sample. In fact, only people who had telephones would be eligible for their survey. And so this sample was not representative of the population of voters. And so as a result, their predictions were off, right? Okay, so this is an example of what can happen if, you're, <clears throat> if your sample is not selected randomly. So in other words, if all of the observations in your population do not have an equally likely probability of being chosen for the sample. Okay, so here's my use case study. It says, in a study conducted by the CDC in the United States, they used a simple random sample because they wanted to study the prevalence of diabetes among adults, okay? So how do they do it? Well, they had a list of households already. So they had a big data repository where they had the stored list of households. And so then they used some method. Uh, I don't know the detail exactly, probably random number generator or something like I'm about to show you next. And they use the random, the computer assisted method, the random number generator to select from the list of households. And then they could use the results to uh, talk about diabetes prevention and, and control based on where the uh, higher prevalence of diabetes ended up being, okay? So now let's jump over to my Jupyter Notebook and we'll take a look at how to implement a simple random sample in Python. And like I always say in um, all my videos, this isn't the, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So if you know a different way, um, definitely do with what, do whichever way you feel comfortable with. All right, so I'm just, this is just uh, to get you an idea. So our first example is going to be a simple random sample. Okay, so, the first thing I'm going to need to do is, sorry, is uh, import our libraries, and modules, whatever you want to call it. And so here I'm going to import random. I'm going to use R. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to create a population. And for my purposes, I'm just going to create a list. Now you could use a list in a data frame or however you want to do it like that, which is probably how you would do it like in your practice. I'm just going to, for, for educational purposes, I'm just going to make a list. And then I'm going to set the sample size. I'm going to store that in a variable. And let's say I want a sample size of five. Okay, and this is scalable, right? You can change this based on your purposes. And then what I want to do is uh, take my sample. So I want to do my simple random sample. Okay, so what's it gonna look like? I'm gonna get my sample and store it. I'm gonna say R, so I'm gonna use this sample function from random, which is gonna randomly select a sample. Now, we can take a look at um, what this information about this function. So it chooses K unique random elements from a population sequence or set, okay? So here's our population which in this case is a list. And it's gonna return a random sample of, K, of size K. So we're gonna pass in population and then pass in the sample size. And we will print the sample. And what you'll notice here is that <clears throat> I've got five uh, random samples. So if this were the sample, the uh, study we just talked about, we would have just selected household number eight, three, six, one, and five, right? And we can do it again. We'll get a different uh, selection, okay? Okay, so that's how you can implement that. It's definitely scalable. Um, and as long as you have, as long as this corresponds to the possible input here for this function, you can do it. Oh, let me try that again, mental go. Hmm? Let's see what we're doing now. 
shift cat. Right? Okay, yeah, here we go. So as long as you your parameters meet the qualifications here, then you'll be able to use this function. There are other functions, as I mentioned. Um, so you can also use, you can just put a list directly into this. Go like this. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna be using this function today quite a bit. All right, well now let's go back to my presentation and we'll go on to the next type. <clears throat> so the next type of sampling is called stratified sampling. So this is when we're gonna take our population and we're gonna separate into subgroups based on some kind of a characteristic. And that characteristic could be age, it could be gender, it could be income. So it could be, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what type of variable it is. It just matters that everybody that's in that group shares that in common. So sometimes we say this is uh, creating homogeneous subgroups because everybody in the stratum should have similar characteristics. Once we have our population broken into stratum, then we randomly select from those stratum. But um, the random sample from each stratum has to be proportioned to its size in the population. Okay, so that's something we have to consider when you're doing stratified sampling. Otherwise, you could get uh, you could get a sample that isn't representative of the population. So here's my use case example. UCLA did a study of uh, stratified random sample of households where they want to study the prevalence of asthma among children. Okay, so how did they stratify it? Well, the way they stratified it was based upon zip code. Okay, so they said, if you live in a zip code, then you, that is uh, a characteristic that you all have in common. But if you think about, you know, if you live in the same zip code as somebody, obviously you have the same similar geographical location, which then could mean that you have similar, maybe similar air quality maybe similar water quality like this. Okay, so, so it's, it's not a bad stratification. And then the random sample was selected from each stratum. And then the results are used to identify areas with high rates of asthma. And then you can go ahead and target that area for prevention and intervention. Okay, so now let's go back to uh, Jupyter Notebook. And my Computer seems frozen. Well, okay, that was weird. And now we'll go back here. All right, and we're going to look at stratified sampling now and how to do that in Python. Okay. So far as stratified sampling, um, we have to create a population, but our population has to have stratum. Okay, so um, we're gonna use the random again, so we don't need to bring that in. But what we're gonna have to do is when we create this population, we're going to have to create stratum or two different subgroups, okay? So I'm gonna create just something as simple as possible, male and female. So I'm just going to make it by age. Okay, so 20, no. my number lock keeps getting unpressed because this, I have a narrow keyboard, I think, from a different country. All right, so then I'll make a comma, let's go from here, and let's make female ages, and let's say we go from 20, 24, 26, 28, and 35. So basically the same ages if you uh, if you are correct for maturity. <laughs> Just joking. Uh, where the, the men, actually, no, never mind, never mind. I said that backwards. What I meant was to say females are more mature than males, but I said it backwards, sorry. Anyways, just forget I said that. Let's keep going. So the sample size, uh, let's make it six. And then here we're going to, now we're gonna have to do two things. We're going to have to scale the sample size of the stratum based on the population length. And then we'll also have to select the sample, okay? So the first thing we wanna do, 
So let me make my comment. I want to make a stratified sample. The first thing I'm gonna do is create an empty list of my sample. Okay, and now what I want to do is make a for loop that's going to loop through my dictionary here and access each of the keys and then choose from the values. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to say for stratum in population. What I want to do first, I'll make my sample size. So I'm going to say stratum sample size, let's say SS. And this is going to be equal to, so I want this to be an integer not a float. <clears throat> so I'm gonna say integer equals sample size, multiply that. So I'm gonna take six times the length of the, of the particular uh, group, subgroup. So population and then straight up. Okay. And then what I wanna do is take that and divide it by the length of the entire population. Okay. And I should have three parentheses, and I do. <clears throat> Don't I? Let's see, one, two, and three. Okay. Mm, or is that too many? Actually, you know what? I think I just need two. And I need one here. That's better. Okay. Mm, should be okay. Now, Next thing I wanna do is make sure that my sample size is not zero. So I'm gonna say if stratum, oops, stratum SS is greater than zero, then what I wanna do, I wanna collect the sample. And I'm gonna use random sample. So I'm gonna take population and then run through this dictionary. <clears throat> and then from here, I'm going to use the, the smaller of these two sample, stratum sample size, or the length of the population in case it's, uh, in case one of, one of them is larger than the other. Because if you have um, sample size larger than the population, then it won't work. <laughs> you will get an error. And I can't really see this, so and you, that means you can't see. So let me move it over here and make sure I have the correct number of parentheses. Okay. Um, and that one's saying that it's too many. So let me just double check my code here. Oh, this one should not be here. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, because I'm taking the minimum of either the sample size or the population. All right, now what I want to do is take that and put it into my empty list. So, okay. And then finally, let's get out of the loop and print the sample. And let's do it again. Oops. Stratum SS is not defined. So it looks like I, mm, 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 what did I do here? Oh, here it is. And is that everything then? Okay. Um, I've got a misspelling, stratrum. Stratum, stratum. Okay, let me just check it. Stratum, stratum. Right. Okay, and now we've got our nice list here. And let's check it again. So if I do it again, I should get, actually, am I getting different numbers? Yeah, I am. Okay, for some reason it keeps putting 30 in the same place, but you can see these numbers are changing. Oh, there's different now. Okay, so there you have it. That's how you can implement stratified sampling in Python. So the key is, uh, proportion the sample size of the stratum according to the population. And then also you have to make sure that uh, the stratum sample size is bigger than zero. And also you get an, if your uh, population sample size, I'm oh, sorry here, 
your, if the length of your population is um, smaller than a sample, you'll have a problem. Okay. All right, so let's go back to my presentation now. And we'll go to the next type of sampling. which is called cluster sampling. Now cluster sampling is, it sounds, when I give you the definition, it's gonna sound a little bit like stratified sampling, but actually it's different because in this, in this uh, method, we do create subgroups, but our subgroups are not homogeneous. So they're heterogeneous subgroups. Okay, so this involves dividing the populations into clusters or groups like neighborhoods or schools, and then randomly selecting a sample of the clusters, okay? So all of the individuals within the selected clusters are then included in the sample. And this can be more efficient than simple random sampling if you have a large population that's dispersed, okay? So then what's the main difference between stratified sampling and cluster sampling is that stratified sampling involves dividing the population into the homogeneous subgroups, while cluster sampling involves dividing the population into heterogeneous subgroups or clusters. Um, so let's take a look at an example here. So I've got a study conducted by the World Health Organization in several African countries. A cluster sample of households was selected of all the households in each country to estimate malaria among children. Okay, so how do they do it? The population was divided into clusters based on villages or communities. And then a simple sample, a simple random sample of clusters was selected. Well, I should say a random sample, not simple. And then a random sample of these clusters was selected, okay? All households within the selected cluster was then included in the sample, okay? So you create the clusters, you select a randomly observation from each cluster, and then all of the cluster is included in the sample. All right. So then let's go ahead and go to Python, back to the notebook. And we'll take a look at how to implement this in Python. Let's go back to here. All right. So now we want to do cluster sampling. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay, so again, uh, we need to make population, but we need to create population with clusters. Okay, so again, we create a dictionary and we'll create cluster one, cluster two, and say cluster three. And make sure I spell everything correctly this time. All right, so then for cluster one, let's go ahead and put in some data. Cluster two, let's do the same thing, four, five, six, and then cluster five, we'll say seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. All right, so there's our population. Now we'll go ahead and set our sample size. Hold on, let me just get closer. There we go. So we'll set the sample size. So the sample size, seven. And then we'll do our clustering. Now, um, there is such a thing as, uh, we haven't talked about it yet, but when it comes to taking samples, we could, um, either sample with replacement or without replacement. So previously I was talking to you about if I want to take a simple random sample of a deck of cards, right? So I have a deck of cards. I know there are 52 cards in the set or in the deck rather. And if I take, when I take one card, the first time I take out the card, I have a one out of 52 probability or chance of choosing that card. Now for the next card, I've got a one out of 51 chance of choosing that card because I've changed the, the size of the sample space. So I've changed the number of uh, cards. I've changed the number of choices, right? So if you take a sample without replacement, 
then every time you do it, the probabilities change, right? So the first time you take the card from the deck of cards, it's one out of 52. The second time you take the cards, it's one out of 51 and so on. So every time you take out a card, the total number of cards decreases. And so here we want to, uh, if, I, if I put the card back in the deck, so let's say I take out the card, got one out of 52 chance of, of choosing an ace of spades, okay? So I select it and then I put it back into the deck. Now, I, I still have a one out of 52 chance for every other card because the size of the deck hasn't changed, right? So we're going to take a sample of cluster. We're going to do cluster sampling with replacement. So we're going to allow for the possibility of choosing the cluster more than once so that we don't change the sample size. Okay, so we're going to create our empty list for a sample. And then I'm going to say, while the length of my sample is uh, less than, hold on, let me dismiss that. Uh, the length of the sample is less than my sample size. What I want to do, I'm going to take my cluster equal to my random choice. And I wanted to make this a list of my population keys. And then I'll take the element in the cluster to be r.choice. And then here I'm going to take population. And then I need the uh, this cluster. So from the cluster here. So you see what is happening. I take um, this variable cluster is going to hold the population keys. So cluster one, cluster two, cluster three in a list randomly selected. And then I'm going to add to those. Um, the element is going to become the value pairs are the values of the key cluster selected randomly. Okay. And then I will take sample dot append my element here, and then I will print it back out of the loop and print my sample. And I've got some error. I forgot the commas, my bad. I thought, what if I run the code and there's no error? <laughs> okay. So there we've got our cluster sampling. And you can see every time you do, you get a different uh, sample. Okay, so that's how you can implement cluster sampling in Python. And so now let's go back to presentation and we will go to the next sampling type, which will be the leave the fourth one, which means we have two left. So our next type of sampling is called systematic sampling. Okay, so this technique involves basically you make a list of your observations of your population, and then you, you choose it by selecting every nth individual. So if I have a list of like a million people, maybe I want to choose every 13th person. So um, or I want to choose every 23rd person, or I want to choose every fifth person. So how do we get the value of n? It's determined by dividing the population size by the sample size we need to make our uh, sample have, uh, and to make our statistical test have enough power. Okay, so you may have seen before, there's a way that we can calculate the sample size we need so that our statistical test will have sufficient power. Okay, so you take the value uh, to get the n for the nth individual, we take the population and divide by the desired sample size. Okay, so here's an example. Oops, I go back the wrong way. Yeah. So there's a study conducted by uh, researchers at the University of Michigan, and a systematic sample of patients was selected from the list of all patients who visited the care clinic over a certain period of time, and they want to study the uh, prevalence of depression among the patients. So what do they do? They just took every 10th patient who visited the clinic and included them in their sample. Okay, so fairly straightforward, right? If you have a thousand people, then your sample is gonna be 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Actually, if you have a thousand, sorry, if you have a thousand people, then wait a minute, a thousand divided by 10, right? Yeah, should be um, 100. <laughs> okay, 
So anyways, uh, let's go over to Python and implement this. Systematic sampling. All right, so let me change my screen to this one. And then let's go over here. Okay. So now we're going to do systematic sampling. Now for systematic sampling, I'm, I can actually just come up here and recycle some of this code because I don't have to create any special uh, subgroups. So let's say systematic sampling here, and then let's go ahead and create a population, just uh, nothing special about our population. <clears throat> and then we're gonna create our sample size. Now, to do the systematic sampling, what I have to do is, again, I have to create a sample where I'm choosing every, you know, whatever um, element. So let's say if I've got, let's say I want to take every second, every second person starting from uh, one out of those 10 people, right? So then what I can do for my systematic sampling, I'm gonna make my sample equal to, now I'm gonna use a list comprehension. So, so what I wanna do, I want to say for, um, for data in, now I need a range from zero to the length of my population. So there's my population, which is like obviously length 10. Then I want to take and divide population by the sample size, which I said is uh, five. So that's going to give me two, right? So just 10 divided by five is what I've done there. And now I need to go back over here and say um, population. Oops, population, and then here we'll do data and yeah, there. Okay, so that should create a nice sample size of every second uh, value starting with one, actually. So it should be one, three, five, like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and print it. Oops, let me go back up. And, ah, uh, you know. I don't need a, why did I write a code? I have no idea. All right, there we go. And we've got it. Okay, so that's systematic sampling. So the key thing here is to choose the in based on the population divided by sample size. Here, our sample size is five. So if I were to, let's say I made the list like this, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but let me just make sure. Now let's see what we get. Same thing. Hold on, let me just check something. Hmm. Yeah. So now what happened is um, we get like this, but let's change this number then. Let's just make this bigger and let's change this number to. 10. Okay, now see what we get. What? Hold on. Let's try it. <laughs> that's very strange. Uh, that's weird. I just keep getting one. Wonder why. Okay. So if we put it at five, then we get. Hey, what's going on? Let me get rid of this. Yeah, so now we just get the same thing before. So if I change the sample size, then of course um, the n will be a different value and I'll get different numbers. <clears throat> so what happened before I changed this to 20 and I changed this to 10. So the number one appeared every 10th number, <laughs> which is why I had like just one, one, one like that. Okay, 
So anyways, that was interesting. But now let's go stay focused and go back to the last uh, slide here. And then we'll be finished. And so now we're going to talk about the one sample technique you should probably not use. Oh, where is it? Oh, it's just called, oh, I guess I forgot to make a slide for this. Okay, that's fine. I don't really need it. I'll just uh, go back to the Jupyter Notebook and show it to you and discuss it here. Go like this, right, and then here. Okay, so well, this last example is called um, convenience, convenience sampling. Okay, so the convenience sampling is when you're selecting individuals that are just readily available and willing to participate in the study. So like if you're doing a class project, then it could be your friends, your family, or people you work with. And this is usually done because you have limited time or limited resources, or because your study, <laughs> it's not important if your study is like uh, um, very legitimate. Okay, so you know, it's it's like you you stood outside the grocery store, or you know, just anything that's convenient. And the problem with it is just that if you usually, if people are willing to participate, um, then they they feel strongly about it. So that's if you've ever seen the rating systems. Uh, sometimes these aren't very reliable because people who can who will participate in surveys without any sort of incentive, usually have some sort of strong feeling about it. So that's one problem that you could run into. And then the other problem is, you know, it's just a convenient sample. So how do I do a convenient sample? Well, <laughs> it's basically the same thing, except here, um, we're just selecting randomly from our, so it's, it's basically the same idea here as a simple random sample, as far as the coding implementation goes. But the idea is different because we're, we're, we're taking a, we're only taking the sample of people who are making themselves available to us. Does that make sense? Okay. So the use case example, um, uh, some researchers at a university did a convenient sample of students who selected from a, and they were selected from a psychology course to examine for perhaps the relationship between personality traits and academic performance. So they chose the psychology class simply because it was available, right? So if the results of the studies, they could be used to generate a hypothesis for future research, but obviously they couldn't be generalized to the wider population of students, right? Because they were only representative of the students in that particular class or in that particular convenience sample. Okay, so uh, that's it from me. And that's it about some five techniques for sampling and statistics with the implementation in Python. Hopefully that helps. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or if you notice any errors, please mention that in the comments. Thanks for watching and uh, I hope that was helpful.